We're in Ljubljana right now, the capital of Slovenia, and today we're gonna walk you through the top things you need to see in this amazing city. Ljubljana is one of our favorite cities in Europe, and there's so much to see in Slovenia's capital. Let's start with the first thing on our list, Ljubljana's iconic castle. Perched upon a cliff overlooking the city, this castle has been one of Ljubljana's defining landmarks for centuries. While original Roman forts were built on this hill over 1,000 years ago, the castle's current form dates back to the 15th century. And with all that history, it's absolutely worth checking out. And to reach the top, you have a few different options. You can hike on one of the four main walking trails to the castle, which offers shaded forest paths and stunning views of the Ljubljana skyline. We enjoyed walking up one path and then down another, so you get different vantage points along the way. It's definitely a steep hike up, but it's actually pretty short. Our party had a couple different age groups in it, and everybody was able to make it to the top. But if walking isn't your thing, you can also take a funicular right to the castle entrance. For this, you can expect a short but very scenic ride from the lower station to the castle station. We've heard that the giant glass windows offer some great views with a smooth ride. Once you reach the castle, you can explore the courtyard area for free. But if you want to venture inside its museum, inner rooms, or climb the tower, you'll need tickets, which you can purchase from the ticket booth right before the drawbridge. So we've made it to the top of the castle here in Ljubljana, and the views you get from the top are absolutely incredible. There's a couple different walking paths you can take to walk up here. All of them lead you to the castle, and as you climb up, you get increasingly good views. The trails are pretty well maintained. It's soft gravel, and then there's some wooden stairs. There's a lot of spots to pause along the way, so even though it's a bit of a hike to get up here, it's definitely doable for people of all ages. The next thing you need to do when you visit Ljubljana is to check out its lively central market. Being centrally located in the city center, this is a great spot to fuel up on some Slovenian food and culture. One of the best things to do in Ljubljana is to check out the central market. This takes place every day except Sunday, but we're told the best day to come is Saturday. I think it's a little bit more extensive on Saturdays. Here you can get any fresh fruit and veggie your heart desires, it seems. And there's also a lot of stalls selling artwork, t-shirts, sausage, meats, cheeses, honey. And man, is it bustling. It seems like all of the locals come here to get their weekly groceries. And it's also way bigger than we were expecting. We've been to farmer's markets in the States that aren't nearly this big and everything looks extremely fresh. And everyone's so friendly here too. It's definitely worth a visit, even if you don't buy anything just to take some of the local culture in and while you're at the market just a tip for you we were told the stalls by the main road tend to be the most expensive so definitely wander in if you want to get the best price so another iconic thing you need to do when you come to Ljubljana is check out their fresh milk vending machine believe it or not for 30 euro cents there's a vending machine that disperses these empty plastic bottles I think a dollar you could actually get a glass bottle and it's located right next to this milk vending machine so I don't know if I can drink a liter of milk on the spot but I'm told this is something you have to do when you come to Ljubljana so to start filling up the milk I think I just put a few more coins in here and then it opens up and I can start filling. So let's see if that works. And it just opens like that? That's like straight out of a science fiction movie. All right, this might be a two-hand operation. So here goes nothing. No way, that's awesome. Wow, and it's ice cold, that's amazing. I guess I gotta have a sip here while it's fresh as possible, so cheers. <sighs> That's actually really nice. I almost feel like a kid drinking just a glass of milk again. That is so nice and refreshing. And I think it's actually unpasteurized milk, so I think you can't even get this in the US, which is probably why it tastes that much sweeter. That's actually delicious. And not only is this milk sweet, it's great for sharing too. Bottoms up. And no trip to Ljubljana is complete without crossing over one of the city's most iconic landmarks, the Dragon Bridge. This reinforced concrete bridge spans the Ljubljanica River that runs through town and is famous for its four copper dragons that guard the bridge's entrance. We're at the Dragon Bridge here in Ljubljana and the dragon is sort of the staple icon of Ljubljana. And if you're wandering around Ljubljana, you're going to see a whole lot of dragons here. And that's because legend has it that Jason, the founder of Ljubljana, had slayed a dragon. So you You'll see dragons on t-shirts, magnets, and bridges, like you can see here. 
and legend has it that when a virgin walks across the bridge, the dragon's tail wags, so keep an eye on them. Next, we're heading to probably the most iconic square in Slovenia to marvel at one of its main attractions, the Triple Bridge. This is Ljubljana's most historic river crossing, with the town's original bridge being built here over 700 years ago. And over that time, the bridges spanning the water have grown and now enable both locals and tourists to cross the river dividing Ljubljana's old town with ease. Originally, there was just one bridge on this site, but in the early 1900s, two more pedestrian bridges were added to prevent traffic bottlenecks. Now, you can expect to find street vendors, artists, and street performers along the Triple Bridge, which makes it a beautiful and lively area. We love this area and walking along the river street, so just walking up and down the river is another great thing to do while near the Triple Bridge. Another Ljubljana icon you need to see is the Franciscan Church of the Annunciation, or otherwise known as the Pink Church. This broke style church is one of the main symbols in Ljubljana, with its towering stature guarding over Ljubljana's main square. And while the church's pink color makes it one of Slovenia's most unique churches, it wasn't always pink. It actually used to be painted red to honor the Franciscan monastic order's symbolic color. However, over time it faded to pink, which the Slovenians like better, and it's been this beautiful shade of salmon ever since. Just outside the church is the town's Prashiran Square, which is one of the most lively in the city. You can expect to find people singing, dancing, and having an overall lively time in the square just outside the church. Another great thing about this square in summer is they have a rain machine here, and it is so refreshing. The next place to see in Ljubljana is Matiokova. Being about a 10 to 15 minute walk from the historic city center, this is the main modern art district in Ljubljana. This area was originally a prison in Yugoslavia, but has been transformed now into an artist commune. If you're adventurous, you can actually still stay in a hostel here where the rooms are the old prison cells. And even if you don't want to stay, you can admire the endless street art line in this area's walls. So this part of Ljubljana is known best for its grungy street art. There's tons of sculptures, street paintings, and all these buildings are covered in technicolor painted murals. It definitely is kind of a spooky vibe. A lot of the paintings being a little more eerie. I'm not huge into graffiti myself, but if you're into street art, you definitely have to check this place out when in Ljubljana. The next thing you need to do in Ljubljana is to take a riverboat cruise. It's no secret that Ljubljana's architecture that runs along the river is stunning, so seeing it from the water is one of the best ways to appreciate all the fine details. Luckily, there are plenty of riverboat cruises that depart frequently throughout the day and offer you amazing views of the city. You can find vendors selling riverboat tickets on the Lock Bridge, right near the Central Market. From here, you'll descend the stairwell to water level, where you can board your boat. Along the way, you'll pass under Ljubljana's famous bridges and see its beautiful architecture. You'll also get to see some of the surrounding countryside. While cruising, be sure to keep an eye out for nutrias, cute beaver-like creatures that call the banks of the river their home. We've also heard dogs are allowed on board, which is great if you're traveling with a furry friend. So we're on one of the river boats right now. It is incredibly scenic. We're here right around sunset and the colors you get are amazing. One of the things we really like about this is you start in town and you get to see all the beautiful buildings from the water, but it also takes you out through the suburbs. You can kind of see a bit more how locals live and it takes you even further where you get almost more rural and you just get these beautiful views of the mountains. It's about a 45 minute ride and it has been a joy the entire way. Absolutely worth checking out. Another thing to do while visiting Ljubljana is take a day trip to Slovenia's famous Lake Bled. Being just an hour from Ljubljana city center, visiting this tranquil alpine lake can be an amazing day trip to consider. Here, you can walk around the lake, fly downhill on its surprisingly thrilling sky coaster, or take a pletna boat out to the lake's iconic island church. There's actually been a church on this island for over 800 years and it's a magical spot to explore. We absolutely fell in love with Lake Bled the first time we visited and actually recently got married here. So be sure to subscribe so you can see that, as well as Bled's famous castle where we celebrated after the wedding. Back in Ljubljana, another thing that can be fun to do when visiting is to explore the capital on two wheels. We biked around Ljubljana on our first trip to the city several years ago and felt it was one of the most fun ways to experience the city. And thankfully, Ljubljana makes this easy. You can rent a bicycle for one euro from the city's many public bike stations, which we cover at a greater length in our Ljubljana travel guide video, so be sure to check that out as well. One of the best ways you can immerse yourself in Slovenian culture is by trying the food. With the area's fertile valleys and breathtaking mountain farms, Ljubljana has built a dynamic and delicious food scene. We share all sorts of famous Slovenian delicacies you need to try on your trip, ranging from street food all the way up to Michelin star restaurants. So be sure to subscribe so you can see our Ljubljana food tour as well. Another thing to do in Ljubljana is just shop. And that might seem pretty obvious, but we actually don't do much shopping in other cities just because a lot of the cities that we go to can feel really touristy. They're only selling cheap souvenirs. But in Ljubljana, we found there's a lot of really cool shops with products made directly in Slovenia that are pretty high quality and pretty useful as well. So we're definitely not souvenir shoppers, but there have been things that have definitely caught our eye here just because they're so unique to the city. So definitely check out some of these cool small shops when you're in town. So those are our top things to do in Ljubljana. Please 
Please like this video if you found it helpful and be sure to subscribe to see our upcoming adventures. After Slovenia, we're heading to Split in Dubrovnik, in Croatia, then Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro, and several amazing sites in Greece. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next one. Adio.